So, yeah, so. Oh, hey, welcome to the York County Agricultural and Industrial Museum, which is part of the York County History Center. And today, we're talking about the telephone. Yeah, so, oh, hey, Mr. Graham, do you have anything else you want to add to the intro? Oh, yeah, Mr. Raymond. We should probably add that when visitors come here, they should look at these exhibits, but not touch them. I think, oh, oh, it hung up on me. So since the invention of the telephone in about the 1870s, the need to communicate with other people electronically has only exploded. An early version of a telephone to my left here would have been made out of wood and have been very, very simple. You'd have a crank on one side, a microphone, and then some type of a, um, a speaker over here, which we're, we're missing, it would be attached to this, this wire. But what this phone doesn't have is a dial pad. So if you want to reach out and talk to somebody, you'd turn this handle, which would activate the bell system and then send your signal over to a switchboard operator. Believe it or not, in the early days of the telephone, the general belief by the telephone companies was that the average citizen wouldn't be able to dial their own numbers by themselves. Hence, you needed a switchboard and a switchboard operator. The person making a call would call the operator. The operator would answer and say, what number? And the person would tell them what number they would like to be patched through to. The operator would then take the jack, plug it into the appropriate port, and the call was connected. Manual switchboards like this were used well into the early 20th century, but ultimately they're going to be replaced by automatic switchboards, which were in use here in New York County up to about 1984. So after about the year 1919, phones with rotary dials on them started to appear in people's homes. This phone allowed the user to dial out directly to the number they wanted to contact. But these phones were slow to roll out and eventually would eliminate the need for a switchboard operator. Like Mr. Raymond mentioned, when you made a call, the call would come here to a switchboard and then to a switchboard operator. The switchboard operator would take this plug and then connect you with another number or a business. Before they did that, however, they'd probably try to see if that line was busy. The way to do that would be to take this jack and just touch it to the edge of the port. If the operator heard a clicking sound, the number was busy and the operator would just probably tell you to call back later. Switchboard operators that worked at switchboards like this might have worked up to six days a week, nine hours a day. It was a very long schedule. If an emergency call came in, they would be responsible for connecting you with the police or the fire department. They would oversee the call and wait until the emergency was taken care of before they hung up. As we mentioned before, phones with dialers, rotary, or push button would eventually eliminate the need for switchboards and switchboard operators. However, switchboards like this were still in use up to about the mid-1980s in large businesses and corporations. 